Hi Nutters, it's Maggie and Murphy here. In this video, we're going to show you how to make these adorable faux fur pom-poms right in your own home. So these pom-poms, you can buy them, they're all over the place now, but they get quite expensive. Some of them I've seen are up to $10 just for a single pom-pom. With a little bit of investment and a little bit of creativity, you can make these for yourself, for your hats and different things in your own home. Everything you need to make it, you can get at your local craft store. So I popped over to my local Joann's, grabbed a couple of different types of fur. This fur comes in a lot of different colors. So it's hard to narrow it down, but when you do, it's gonna be great. I grabbed three different ones and I grabbed a full yard of each, which got a little expensive. Um, I think three total yards of this, but, uh, and some scissors and some other little accoutrement ran me about $90. So you can always buy less than a full yard. Just keep that in mind. I knit a lot and <laughs> I plan on making a lot of hats. So you'll need the fur. You'll need to make a template. This pom-pom uses an eight inch round circle. So what I did is I just took a piece of computer paper, measured a dot in the center, and then used my ruler to go four inches on either side of that dot make a bunch of points, loosely connect it, and then cut it out. Because you're scrunching this up, it doesn't have to be a perfect template. So just bear that in mind. You'll need a good sharp pair of fabric scissors. And I will forewarn you, when you cut this stuff, it flies everywhere. So find a space that you don't mind getting a little bit dirty or floofy. Like Murphy has this all over him right now. <laughs> and I have it all over my leggings. You'll need a button. Make sure that this button is large enough for a needle, a yarn needle, and yarn to pass through. So you'll need a button to make this removable. So you can detach it from your hat, so you can pop the hat in the washing machine, uh, or at least get the hat wet and hand wash it if you need to. And you'll need a needle that will pierce the fabric. Now some people will use or recommend sharp yarn darning needles. I had a hard time finding one, but I did have this guy laying around the house from a former purchase at Joann's. It's a, a doll making needle. So this one was nice and long. It also has a very sharp point on it that allows me to sew through this faux fur fabric. Mm. And you'll need, I know, you'll need some spare yarn. Other tutorials will just have you use regular yarn. I like something that's a little bit on the thinner side just so it's easier to thread in needles and sew through the fabric. But that's just my personal preference. I have this laying around. It's uh, an extra from a Knit Picks project that I did. So that's what I'm gonna use. And then of course, can I have this back? I need my hand. Some fill. All right, so to get started, you're going to use your template and draw out a circle and then cut out your pom-pom shape here. So to get started on your pom-pom, you'll simply trace the circular shape, the template that you've cut all around with the marker this is going to be on the inside, so it doesn't really matter what color it is or if there's any markings left over when you're done cutting it. And once you're done tracing, obviously take your sharp fabric scissors and cut out that circular shape. Now, like I said, this is the messy part and you are going to get some of this faux fur on you, on the surface on which you're working. Uh, it's gonna go everywhere. So I like to make a couple of these at one time just so, you know, I know I'm gonna dirty my workspace. I uh, might as well get the most out of it before I have to clean it again. So we'll just finish cutting all the way around the shape. And then we're ready to move on to the next step. But before we do so, it's nice to give this a little shake once you're done to get any kind of loose fur at least out of the way as much as you can before we keep going here. So you'll see there's quite a bit that falls off from the cutting process. Now this will continue to shed a little bit as you work with it, but by the time you're done with the pom-pom, all of the excess or loose stuff should fall off. So next step, once you've gotten it all cut out, is to cut a section of your yarn, your spare yarn that you'll use to actually sew and shape the pom-pom. 8 to 10 inches should be enough, but I like to cut a little bit extra 
just so I, I'm not afraid that I'll run out. Um, and it's nice to have a little extra to work with as you're tying the pom-pom. So you'll thread that sharper needle with your spare yarn. And then as you work to sew through here, you don't need to double up and knot the yarn. It's just uh, going to be a running stitch through the entire around the entire edge of your pom-pom. So you'll want to start about a half inch in from the side and then just stitch all the way around. If you start too close to your edge, your yarn may pull through and come off the pom-pom. So start half an inch in and you should be good. I like to make half inch to inch size running stitches around the edge of the pom-pom, keeping in mind that the more smaller stitches you make, the harder it is going to be to pull the pom-pom tight when you're done. This longer needle, the doll needle, lets me work a couple stitches at a time before stopping to pull the yarn all the way through. So I'm going to pause here and speed it up and meet you back when the pom-pom has its shape. So now that I've sewn completely around the pom-pom, you can take the darning needle or your sharper needle off of your yarn and start to just tug at the spare yarn, your, your sewing yarn. And you'll see that the pom-pom starts to form its shape here. This is the part where you're going to need the stuffing. So grab just a little bit of stuffing at a time and start to put that into your pom-pom. I like to tighten the strings as I go just to get a feel for exactly how much you need. You really don't want to overstuff the pom-pom because it will be just harder to work with and super stiff. It's nice to have a pliable or malleable pom-pom on the top of a hat. So once you've gotten as much of the cotton fill as you need, all tucked in so that it's not sticking out through the bottom, You'll use that yarn to tighten it up as much as you can, cinching together the bottom of the pom-pom, and then you'll want to knot the yarn in some way that you feel comfortable working. I use just a simple square knot um, because it allows me to tighten that knot in the pom-pom as I tie it here. So I'm just going to tie the same simple knot twice so that it's going to stay in place for me as I finish up the pom-pom. You're almost done here, so it's this is a simple project that you can whip up in no time, and it's nice to do when you've got a couple hats that you're going to give as gifts, or whether you're selling them or just keeping them for yourself. Now, I like to trim the edges so they're nice and even, makes it easier to thread back through your needle. You're going to need the needle just one more time here. So I have a hat here, it's all finished. It's ready for the pom-pom. Take the ends of the yarn and thread them back through your needle here. You're going to use this needle to draw the ends of your yarn on the pom-pom down through the center of your hat. So depending on the decrease at the top of your hat, you might have a very visible, nice, neat hole at the center. And can go directly through this. If not, just kind of pick what's closest to center and put your needle right through there. Careful not to poke yourself here and then just pull the yarn and you can take the needle off. I like to flip the hat inside out. It makes it easier to see what you're doing as you're finishing up attaching the pom-pom. This is where your button comes into play. You want to make sure that you thread one piece of the yarn through each of the buttonholes. Now, I have a four but hole button here, but only two strands of yarn. It doesn't really matter which holes I put the yarn through at this stage. I just like to make sure that I'm using holes that are diagonal or opposite each other. It just, I don't know, it's a comfort thing here, I guess. So I'm going to thread the yarn through the button. one strand through each of these holes. 
You can use your darning needle here. Sometimes the yarn cooperates and uh, goes through pretty easily. There we go. So now we'll push the button down as tight to the hat as we can. And again, you can, this is kind of your preference here. You're welcome to knot this up tightly, but then it makes it harder to remove in the long run. So I like to just tie a simple bow here. Again, that simple knot in the, in the very beginning of the bow lets me get that pom-pom nice and tight. And then the bow keeps it nice and easy to remove for if I do ever need to wash the pom-pom. I'm sorry, wash the hat. So now you flip it back over, the yarn and button are totally invisible, and it looks like you've just got a beautiful hat and great fur pom-pom. If you don't tie that bow tightly, uh, the pom-pom will flop around on the hat more. So again, it's personal preference on how secure you want that pom-pom to look. And that's it. You've made your pom-pom. Murphy and I are going to go make a few more of these babies because we've got some Christmas gifts that we're going to knit up. And uh, I've got some new ideas for some new hat patterns. And so yeah, now that I've got my workspace all prepped and messy, it's a perfect time to continue going. It's also a really snowy day outside, which is like the first snow of the year. So I just have hat fever and, and we're just really excited. Yeah. It's a flurry of knitting and a flurry of faux fur. Right, Murph? It's just a big flurry. Hey, Mom, what are you doing? Why do you do this to me? So, Murphy's gonna continue his nap and I'm gonna go do some knitting. <laughs> Thanks, guys.